SpaceX Starlink gigabit plan. Is it right around the corner? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. So good, that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink and their gigabit plan. Is it right around the corner or not? Well, it's been in the news the last couple of days. I wanna bring it to your attention and give you my commentary, of course, on it. But more importantly, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all of this? So before we get into this, I wanna say that if you enjoy this video, throw it a thumbs up. That is very, very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you, I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a thank you button. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video's still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink coverage, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and the why behind all of it, I'll put a playlist right here. Don't click on it yet, but when you're done watching this video, click over there. You'll find about 350 videos I've put together for you for the last uh, 47 months, 48 months so far. So take a look at those. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They are free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. So the housekeeping is done. Let's go ahead and get into this. I think this is fascinating. Once again, this just came out, I think it was yesterday. SpaceX's push for gigabit internet. SpaceX is advancing its satellite internet service, Starlink, aiming to bring gigabit speeds and low latency broadband to millions worldwide. The company recently filed an application with the FCC to modify its second generation satellite network, targeting improved global connectivity. But while SpaceX is driving technology innovation, regulatory hurdles may prove to be the toughest challenge. Facts. The plan. SpaceX is proposing to lower the altitude of some satellites from about 530 kilometers to roughly 480 kilometers, which it claims will enhance bandwidth and reduce latency. It absolutely will. According to Elon Musk, the next generation satellites launchable only by the Starship rocket will boost bandwidth tenfold, 10X. That is amazing. Combined with lower orbits, this could mean significantly faster speeds and quicker response times for users around the world. Performance on the rise. Starlink has rapidly evolved since its launch, delivering high-speed broadband across various regions. Currently, users are seeing speeds ranging from 25 to 220 megabits per second, with the majority achieving above 100 megabits per second and an upload speed between 5 and 20 megabits per second. Latency averages between 25 and 60 milliseconds on land. The planned upgrades are aimed to raise Starlink's capabilities to gigabits speeds, 1,000 megabits, making high-performance broadband more accessible than ever. Technical upgrades and spectrum flexibility. Among the proposed changes, SpaceX plans to lower the satellite's elevation angle to 20 degrees, extending the duration of connection to the ground stations and enhancing overall connectivity. The next generation satellites will incorporate cutting edge hardware, including high gain antennas and advanced digital processing to deliver more precise and reliable coverage. Additionally, SpaceX is seeking FCC approval for flexible use of KA, V, and E spectrum bands, allowing the network to seamlessly support both mobile and fixed satellite services, crucial for addressing the diverse and growing needs of consumers and businesses businesses alike. Navigating regulatory hurdles. Is there more to the story? Approval, however, isn't guaranteed. The FCC has been cautious of SpaceX's plans, citing potential interference issues with other operators. In 2022, the agency even denied SpaceX an $886 million grant for broadband expansion, questioning whether Starlink could consistently meet required speeds and latency standards. Of course it can. 
Some suggest the resistance may extend beyond technical concerns. Absolutely. Traditional telecom companies hold significant sway in Washington, and the idea that lobbying and corporate interests are influencing regulatory decisions isn't far-fetched. With added scrutiny from the FCC and the FAA and other regulatory bodies, it's clear that bureaucratic hurdles are creating roadblocks and slowing down the path to approval. Absolutely the case. What's at stake? If SpaceX secures FCC approval for these updates, it could overcome the capacity limitations that SpaceX has faced, bringing gigabit speed broadband closer to reality. The company needs to prove that these modifications won't disrupt other networks while seeking flexibility for an expanding user base. As competition in satellite broadband heats up, SpaceX navigates both technical and regulatory challenges. The stakes are high. Will SpaceX establish a new standard for satellite internet, or will bureaucratic hurdles hinder its progress? Great question. The world is watching as SpaceX's Starship prepares to launch the next generation Starlink satellites into orbit. The up-and-coming version 3 satellite's larger and 10 times greater capacity than the current version 2.0 mini satellites are expected to enhance performance significantly. This capability could be a game changer, not just for SpaceX's ambitions beyond Earth, but also for transforming global connectivity as we know it great article. So there's a few things that I want to say here. Number one, Elon Musk has said that he wants to see latency below 20 milliseconds, right? I am currently seeing every once in a while about 15 to 18 milliseconds. So he's getting there. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And that's with the generation two minis, not these gen threes that are like four times the size and like 10 times the capacity. These are gigabit monsters. That said, how are they going to be able to do this? Well, they're going to have to expand once again in that K, A, V, and E band, number one. Number two, bringing the satellites closer to Earth is definitely going to make a big difference. Every little bit closer to Earth means that it takes less time to send the data from your dish up to the satellite, from the satellite back down to the dish, right? It just simply is math. The closer you get, the faster the speeds. But there is some side effects in doing so. And these are the things that SpaceX have to address. Number one, as those satellites get closer to Earth, that means that they're going to experience greater gravitational pull, meaning that it's going to take more thrust or more energy, more capacity or more volume of fuel to keep those satellites at a operational altitude. So their life expectancy most likely will be lowered. Also, being closer to Earth has another problem to it. Number one, the cone where that frequency is going out is going to be smaller, meaning that each satellite will be able to service less people. So you need more satellites to cover the same number of people. Does that make sense? If you have a cone that looks like this, as you get further out, the cone actually strikes wider, right? More people are covered. But as you get closer, that cone gets tighter, meaning that you don't get as many people for each satellite as they're coming by. Once again, needing more satellites. So we need more fuel, we need more satellites. But what do we get? We're getting gigabit speeds. And I really do believe gigabit speeds are right around the corner. Now that we see Starship just doing its thing, the last IFT5 was absolutely just incredible. Watching the Super Heavy come back and land in the Mechazilla, the chopstick arms, was just unbelievable. Absolutely, without words, unbelievable. <laughs> And seeing that star ship actually landed in the ocean, the Indian Ocean, exactly where it was supposed to land, that means in the next launch, IFT-6, they might try bringing Starship back too. That's if that second launch pad is operational. But that would be interesting because at that point, you would have this rocket going up there. You would have the bottom piece, the lower half, landing in one 
And then you'd have the top half, which is Starship, landing in the other landing pad. And just, that would be just unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I really do think that gigabit speeds are right around the corner. I would estimate by the end, eh, maybe mid of 2025, let's say six months from now, eight months from now, I think we will see gigabit speeds. It could be even faster. It really depends on the deployment of these new generation three satellites. If they can actually get Starship to start delivering those satellites into space, these satellites have been around for a while. They were gonna be called version twos. Then they couldn't release them because they were too damn big and Starship was, let's say, delayed. So they made the version two minis, which are definitely faster than the version 1.5s, but they're not as fast as the version twos. So the version twos, the old version twos, will now be called version three. These are the ones that they've been working on for now probably a couple of years. So they're ready to go. They just need something to deliver them up there. And since they're so big, they cannot put these satellites into a Falcon 9 rocket. They're just too big. They would only be launching a couple at a time. They don't want that. So the Starship being so massive, it can actually deploy hundreds of these Starlink satellites into orbit at a time. 100, 200, whatever it is. That is a lot for each launch. So I think what will happen is once Starship starts delivering these version three satellites, things are going to increase at orders of magnitude, just exponentially. The curve is going to do this. So this is exciting, really exciting times. What do you think about all this? Down below, let me hear your thoughts. Are you ready for gigabit? I am. That would be fiber coming from the stars. Absolutely craziness, crazy. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, thank you. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years of my merch and my shirts and my tees and my books and everything else. If there's something there that you like, please pick it up and support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.